Tobias, you've Hi. got some new things for us. Yes, yes. Welcome to my booth at uh, the Messi Show 2015. Uh, at this, this show, I'm releasing four new products, uh, all in the 500 series range. So let me take you through the products really quick. Uh, first off is a stereo bus compressor. Uh, this is one of my most requested items. Uh, people wanted the, the 7X in stereo, so I made one. <laughs> so this is basically two 7X compressors combined in a stereo unit, linked or unlinked. So you got one set of control to control the left and right uh, signals, all with a parallel compression knob and the side sidechain filters, just as the 7X compressor. This one is available now and retails as at 750 US dollars. So, were there any challenges in getting a dual unit? Yes, the uh, the link circuit was quite quite a challenge to get, but um, we, we 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 put in an actual battery inside the unit, as you would have with the old 1176 style compressors, and also the all the fats is matched inside inside the compressor, so it's it's, it's tracking very very well in stereo. Uh, so, and the second product we're releasing is a mid-band EQ. This is a clone of the uh, Pultec MEQ5. It's all inductor based, transformer coupled in and out. And it's got the vintage op-amp. Uh, it's a very heavy unit, very, very, very packed PCB. Yeah, how, how did you fit all that in there? It's, it's, uh, uh, it's a good question. <laughs> Uh, what we did is that you, you, you got the PCB dimension and we had to wire all the inductors and transformers in-house to actually fit on the PCB. So that was quite a challenge. Is it a dual width unit or is it a single width? It, it's a single width unit. This is just a blank panel. Just a blanket panel? Yes, yes. So, the unit so that itself, is quite a challenge. I mean, I know those is. components are pretty pretty. It big. is, it is. It's, it's quite, quite massive and it weighs a ton. Uh, but it's done by the original schematics uh, and we're using instead of a tube circuit we're using the uh, Melkor 731 op amp in there so it, it's it's very creamy sounding and perfect for guitars or you know mix buses if you want to scoop some mids and get the the, the uh, lower the uh, you know the lower highs really in your face sort of sound so it's it's a very excellent sounding unit uh, the third product is a mic pre. This is an evolution from the 6x500 that we have had on the market for quite some time. It's a very disco looking mic pre. It's a disc, disco, disco preamp. <laughs> it's a, it's a 30, um, 30 segment LED uh, output metering which is very accurate and you can calibrate it to whatever AD converter you, you, you're feeding it to. So, so what's your thinking behind the kind of massive LED display on the front there? I, I like metering and I, I, I like to be able to see it from a distance. If I'm sitting in front of the console and I have it, the preamp in a rack somewhere in the back, you can e easily see where, where you are. Uh, once again, it's all discrete, transform a couple in and out uh, using two 70, 1731 op amps in there. Very I tell you, it's a difficult thing to film with all those lights on it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very bright, very bright. Um, this one will retail at 599 US dollars. Uh, so it's it's a very powerful preamp, and you also get some tone controls. So you get highs and lows. So you can boost a little bit while while recording. It's a, it's it's a very nice sounding vintage sounding preamp. So what was your your target when you were designing that? What were you trying to aim, emulate? What are you trying to go for? Uh, I'm just trying to get as much as analog sounding sound out of the preamp as possible. So, so would you characterize that as, as warmth or a certain dynamic range or punch to the I, sound? I'd say punch, punch and, and, and a certain kind of warm to it. But the, uh, it, it, since it's all transformer coupled and, and together with the 1731 op amp, it gives you a, a speed and warmth at the same time, which is quite unique. Uh, so um, when, when you're tracking digitally today, you really need you know, the transformers and the op-amps to do its thing before you're hitting the clean and digital en environment. Yeah. And you have one more, I think. Yes, we have uh, is the it your fourth. Is it your favorite? Yes, the fourth and, and the final release this year will be uh, a, a complete channel strip 
this is one unit high in one slot, one slot, but it has a mic preamp, compressor, and EQ and filter in all in one unit. And what's cool with this unit is that, that it was designed by Paul Wolf and me. Um, so we really wanted to get like a fully featured console strip shrunken into one 500 series module. And, and we managed to do that, do that with the transformers by using SMB uh, uh, manufacturing. So you, you get transformers in and out and all the amplifiers and stuff is, is surface mounted on the PCB. I'm just going get, to get around you, get a close-up of yes. that. Yes. Uh, it's quite a feat of miniaturization there. Yeah. So, so um, the, the cool thing with it, with it that you get a, a proper mic amp and a proper you know, console output stage. So you can really drive the unit and, and use this part as a proper fader, like you would on, on, on a console. Uh, the compressor is also very nice. It's, it's a VCA style compressor. You get a parallel compression knob so you can go from dry and wet. Uh, there's jumpers on the board inside where you can set the uh, speed of the compressor and the behavior of the compressor so you can get it to sound smooth or aggressive. You can also link it with the, with the second unit. And the EQ is also pretty powerful. You got low band and high band Baxendahl filters. You get a sweepable mid ranging from 500 to 5K. Also very smooth, very smooth sounding and very musical sounding. Uh, I guess it's so crowded on the front panel you haven't got space to put those jumpers on the front, but are they easier yeah. to get to at the back? Uh, not really. You, you have to set them on, on the PCB itself. So, so when you buy the unit, it comes with what I think is a, like a default setting, which is smooth and easy to use. If you want it to be more aggressive, you can, you can set, set the jumper on the compressor, for example, or you can set the attack from fast to slow, which make it more grabby and more, more aggressive. So do you think the default setting will suit for most purposes? I hope so, yes, I hope so. But it's, it's very easy to take out the module and swap a jumper and, and um, you change, ch change the character of it. So the same goes for the EQ. You can change the high band from 5K to 10K uh, and the low band from t uh, 200 Hz to 100 Hz. And you also get a 80 Hz low cut filter in there. So it's, it's a very complete, proper console channel. And when you're recording, you really hear, you can really drive the unit as you would on the console. So. Uh, a, a rack full of these will certainly make your in-the-box mixing sound better <laughs> and analog. Do we have um, shipping information? When are these going to be available? Uh, all the products are in stock now, except for the channel strip. It will be uh, available in uh, late May this year. <laughs> and the, 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 the price for the channel strip is it's very affordable. It's, it's only 600 US dollars wow, for the, for the channel strip. Yeah, so, so uh, pretty affordable. A lot of your money. Uh, yes. All right. Thank you for coming by. Thanks again.